Hello and welcome to my channel, Bible Flockbox. In this video, I'm going to be talking about five facts that the Jehovah's Witnesses don't want you to know. Fact number one, early publications of the Watchtower included the symbol of the Knights Templar in the upper left hand corner. This is actually a Masonic symbol, as can be seen by this picture from a Masonic Lodge in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with the symbol of the Knights Templar hanging from the ceiling of the Lodge Room. The symbol of the Knights Templar on early Watchtower publications has led to speculation that the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell, was a Freemason. Interestingly enough, this same Knights Templar symbol can also be found on Mr. Russell's gravestone, which itself is in the shape of the Masonic Pyramid and Capstone. It also may refer to the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. This was very important for Mr. Russell. I'll talk more about that later. Fact number two, Watchtower publications are full of subliminal images. The images I'm about to show you come from a website which I'll include the link to in the description box. The image on the left is actually one image that has been mirrored. As a result, there is some sort of demonic face in the middle. In the image on the right, there is a face hidden in the hand of Jesus. This image pictures what appears to be the redeemed saints with Jesus. One of their hands looks ghostly and demonic. Also, Jesus' right hand looks odd, like some kind of lobster claw. In this image, someone drew in the Greek philosopher Antisthenes, listening to Paul speak. He was a philosopher from the 4th century BC, so it's impossible the two of them could have ever met. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting because the thief in this image holds a piece of jewelry in the shape of a witchcraft symbol. In this image we have a goat. Here is the goat again, hidden in the flame of someone's hand. Does that remind you of anything? The goat of Mendez or Baphomet, maybe? And that's quite interesting considering that early Watchtower publications included the symbol for the Knights Templar, and the Knights Templar were actually accused of worshipping Baphomet, along with committing acts of sodomy and spitting on the cross. As a result, the King of France, Philip IV, had them suppressed on Friday the 13th, October 1307. Many were arrested and tortured. Not to mention, Baphomet is also the official mascot for the Church of Satan. By the way, you'll see much more subliminal messages in Watchtower literature if you visit the link to the site that I provided in the description box. Fact number three, Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, was a fraud and a false prophet. About him being a fraud, Mr. Russell sued for defamatory libel after a Protestant minister named J.J. Ross published a pamphlet calling Russell's religion the destructive doctrines of one man who is neither a scholar nor a theologian, and who never attended the higher schools of learning, knows comparatively nothing of philosophy, systematic or historical theology, and is totally ignorant of the dead languages. Russell lost this lawsuit after the court asked him if he knew the Greek alphabet. He said he did, but when he was asked to identify some Greek letters, he was unable to do so and ultimately confessed that he did not know Greek, proving J.J. Ross's accusations true. About Russell's false predictions, he claimed that the end of the world would come in 1914. Then, after that prophecy flopped, he changed the date to 1925. He died in 1916, so he wasn't around to see that date fail as well. I want to give some more background as to how Mr. Russell came up with a 1914 date for the end of the world. By calculations from the book of Daniel and the measurements from the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, Russell claimed that those calculations revealed the date for the end of the world because he believed that the Great Pyramid was one of God's witnesses. Fact number four, the Jehovah's Witness Bible is a very bad translation of scripture. The Jehovah's Witnesses use their own version of the Bible called the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, and it intentionally misinterprets scriptures that point out the divinity of Jesus Christ, since the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that Jesus was God the Son. 
An example would be John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. What I have here is a page from the online Greek interlinear Bible, which shows the Greek that the book of John was originally written in, with the English translation down below. Speaking of Jesus, it states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. Notice how the Jehovah's Witness Bible online puts it. It says that Jesus was a God, with a small g. This signifies that Jesus was and always will be beneath Jehovah and that Christ and God are not co-equal, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the name of Jehovah in the Bible. The Jehovah's Witnesses are adamant about calling God Jehovah when they pray to Him, because they claim that is God's name and using the correct name of God is a matter of salvation. The name Jehovah appears in the New World Translation Bible nearly 7,000 times. Unfortunately, Jehovah is not even the real name of God, so that is a total blunder. The sacred name of God is known as the Tetragrammaton and is represented by the consonants YHWH. No one really knows how to pronounce this because it fell out of use for so long, but many believe that the most likely pronunciation would be Yahweh. The name of Jehovah appeared when Bible scholars combined YHWH with the vowels of Adonai, a title for God, to try and salvage the sacred name of God. This resulted in the sound Yehovah, which has a Latinized spelling of Jehovah. The first recorded use of this spelling was made by a Spanish Dominican monk, Raimundus Martini, in the year AD 1270. So basically, the name for God which Jehovah's Witnesses are using, Jehovah, was a man-made invention of the 13th century. Another interesting twist in the New World Translation Bible is that in all their attempts to try and distinguish Jehovah God from Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 13 identifies Jesus Christ as Jehovah in their Bible. It states, starting in verse 9, For if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, and exercise faith in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Notice here it's talking about calling upon the name of Jesus for salvation. Verse 10, For with the heart one exercises faith for righteousness, but with the mouth one makes public declaration for salvation. To reiterate, public declaration of who? Jesus. Let's continue. Verses 11 and 12. For the scripture says, No one who rests his faith on him will be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. There is the same Lord over all, who is rich toward all those calling on him. So far, it's clear that we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. But notice how the next verse identifies him. Verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of Jehovah will be saved. So right here in the Jehovah's Witness own Bible, which tries so hard to distinguish Jesus Christ from Jehovah God, Jesus is identified as Jehovah. Isn't that ironic? Why is this the case? Because the original text meant to identify Jesus as God, because Jesus is God who became a man to save man. And no matter how hard Jehovah's Witnesses try and change the Bible to disprove that, there are going to be some slip-ups because the Bible is full of scriptures pointing to the divinity of Jesus Christ. Another startling fact about the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures is that its New Testament is based on the Westcott and Hort manuscripts. Westcott and Hort were 19th century scholars that were opposed to the King James Version New Testament. So, they decided to come up with their own translation using two manuscripts entitled the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. They leaned more on the Vaticanus, which had been hidden in the Vatican for centuries before they got a hold of it, and it also conveys a Roman Catholic perspective and bias. These were manuscripts of the 4th century from the Alexandrian school, a region where Christianity was very liberal. Westcott and Hort have also been said to have belonged to secret societies and were involved in practices of the occult, such as channeling spirits through seances, 
one of these clubs were called the Ghostly Guild. If that truly is the case, there is no way these scholars could have been used by God to invent a new and better translation of the New Testament because they were doing the devil's work. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 through 12 condemns communication with spirits of the dead because they are really just demons in disguise. There have also been accusations leveled against Westcott and Hort that they were in association with the Jesuits and in support of the New World Order. It's kind of funny how, with that being said, the Jehovah's Witness used Westcott and Hort's translation of the New Testament and called their Bible the New World Translation. Fact number five, the Jehovah's Witnesses rule by fear. The Jehovah's Witness organization is completely fear-driven. They get you into their organization by their preaching that you will be destroyed by Jehovah if you don't accept their message. And then, once you're a member, they discourage you from being friends with non-believers. So what you're now left with is Jehovah Witness friends. At that point, if you ever have a falling out with the organization, you have a lot to lose, including all of your Jehovah's Witness friends and possibly even your family if they're Jehovah's Witnesses as well. Not to mention, be destroyed by Jehovah. By the way, if you disagree with any of the doctrines or rules of the organization, you will get disfellowship, which means they will kick you out. And current Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to associate with former Jehovah's Witnesses or they too will get disfellowship. How do you like them apples? Also, if you are a current Jehovah's Witness, you are not allowed to read anything that criticizes your religion. You can get disfellowship for that too. That's one of the ways that Jehovah's Witnesses are kept ignorant about the true history of their religion. The Jehovah's Witnesses were started by a man named Charles Taze Russell that is a proven fraud and false prophet. He may very well have had some ties with Freemasons. Publications of the Watchtower are full of subliminal images, including images that may questionably be tied to the occult. The Jehovah's Witness Bible is a very corrupt translation of scripture based on the translation of spiritualists that may have had ties to the Jesuits and a New World Order agenda. And the Jehovah's Witness organizations rules its members with fear, putting them into a position to have a lot to lose if they do something to get disfellowship. If you would like to learn more about the Jehovah's Witnesses, I have included links to all of my sources in the description box. Feel free to check them out. Also, if you would really like to learn what the Bible teaches, I have included a link to some free online Bible study guides in the description box as well. This has been a Bible Flock Box production. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and share it on your social media. Like me on Facebook as well. I share a lot more content there than on YouTube and I read and answer questions on there more than on here because they're easier to keep track of. Also, I take suggestions for videos. So if you have a suggestion about an interesting topic which you would like to see me turn into a video, drop me a line on my Facebook page. God bless.